Max and the Magic Marker is a really fun platforming game slash puzzle game where you run around, you uh, climb obstacles and floating platforms and kill or avoid enemies. And then there's also this pen that you have and you use it to get to obstacles that you can't possibly reach by simply jumping. And the great thing about this pen is your imagination is the limit. You don't just have to draw a staircase. You can go crazy with it. Like, um, you, you can literally draw like a bunch of circles together if you want and make that into a makeshift staircase. You can draw some kind of weird tree that kind of tills, tilts over so you can climb it. it. Really, your imagination is the limit. I love this game. It's... Uh, you know that Okami game, which was fun, but I feel like this is way more creative just because you could literally draw anything you want and uh, a magic marker type game really works with a 2D platformer wh where when it's in 3D, not so much. The innocent graphics, the colorful color palette, all that combines to make this a kid-friendly game. So if you have kids or little brothers or sisters, this is definitely the game for them to check out. But also, you gotta remember, this is a game where your imagination is the limit. So this is a fun game for any age. I mean, I'm 25 and I had loads of fun trying out different things, uh, drawing different obstacle uh, uh bridge type things to get across set obstacles you know it's a it's really fun for any age because everyone loves to be creative and just have a nice relaxing fun time with the game it is kind of on the easy side but there are some things you got to be a little more creative about than just simply drawing a line through <laughs> through a gap you know there there is some uh, skill involved in this game, especially in the later levels. It's not its not just a very easy um, uh, type of quality to it. It, it. it gets harder, you know, as, as most games do. You collect these little paint packets, and then you can draw with them, and once in a while when you reach a certain point, a monster comes out and sucks out all the paint you already have, and this is so... Obviously, the game would be a little harder, so you, you can't just have an unlimited supply of paint all the time. Also, another way you can collect paint is just to suck back up what you already drew. Say, like, you draw a bridge, and you don't really need that bridge anymore because you already passed it. You can suck that, the paint from that bridge right back up, and you don't lose it. So you can, you can really reuse the paint. There is a paint recycling going on in this game. This game is out for a lot of platforms. Uh, of course, the Nintendo DS, perfect for the Nintendo DS, the Macintosh, the Wii. I'm playing it on Windows, and uh, it's also on the PlayStation Network. And it's also for uh, the uh, Windows Phone 7. So, yeah, it's out for a lot of things. I, I don't really... Um, I'm not too comfortable with the uh, com computer controls, so if you have a DS, I would assume the controls will be perfect on the DS. Uh, on the computer, you move yourself around with the WASD or arrow keys, and then you draw with with the marker, so your hands are kind of spread apart, and it's, it's not natural, especially because you have to jump with a W key, and it's... I mean, it's... It, it's really such a minute complaint, it's almost nothing because you get used to the controls like within minutes, but really I think, uh, you know, having a stylus pen is probably the best for this game. If you get a chance to play it on a DS, that's what I would recommend. When you hold down shift, you can also push things like boxes, but of course, um, you don't um, need to do that a lot because obviously you can create your own boxes so you only need to kind of maneuver the boxes around the environment to say push out of the way to get somewhere or uh, to push onto an enemy's head if you're completely out of uh, ink you know uh, and that's about it other than that I would just recommend drawing your own box over an enemy's head and having it comically fall on them like a, like a Tex Avery cartoon
You son of a bitch, give me back my marker ink. God damn it. Guy comes out of nowhere like a tax collector. Ah, I got more. That's what you get for stealing ink from a from a character in a children's game. I'll I'll stock up an ink in seconds. So, as you can plainly see, the graphics are just fantastic in this game. Everything is colorful and beautiful. The sound effects are superb. Music is okay and relaxing, kind of fun. Actually, I don't really like the music too much. It's like a ukulele. It's annoying, if anything. Also, keep in mind, you don't always have to kill the enemies. You can just kind of avoid them. You know, uh, it's a children's game, so... You know, uh, violence isn't always the answer. But, uh, violence helps, obviously. Don't get scared off by the fact that I said it's a children's game. You know, I remember even when I was a kid, I didn't want to play children's games. The fact is, like I said, it's fun for any age. It's just kind of... It's child-friendly, but anyone can really play it. The puzzles are not always completely easy. Sometimes you actually have to use your brain a little bit. Now, these spinning wheels are kind of going up, so it's really difficult to, to actually figure out the exact perfect shape. I mean, if I just try a regular kind of stick, I don't even know, yeah, it, it just, it's too fast. So it needs, it needs a specific type of shape where it just can't be a regular stick. There's a puzzle element that you really gotta think about. Now, I actually figured out that if the stick is kind of curved, it'll get stuck in, in one of the rolling wheels, and it won't uh, go that fast, so yeah. See, just little, little things like that is what makes this a, a game for any age, because there is thinking involved. This game gets an official Stan Birdman rating of 8.5 out of 10. It's really awesome, so check it out. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, my friends.